Hi, I'm Nicole Hoogland. I'm the Specialised Banking Manager for National Australia Bank, I deal in the southwestern region and look after probably about 11 centres across southwestern Victoria. I help clients that import, export, as well as uh, deal in domestic trade, and I provide advice on the international payment risks when it comes to sending your goods overseas and receiving payment from your buyer. So the methods of payment um, when dealing internationally are open account, payment in advance, letters of credit and documentary collection. Exporting is a great opportunity for our clients to engage in, however the risks are very real when it comes to receiving payment. This is what open account is. You have your importer, your exporter, they're governed by a contract. Once the goods are sent from the exporter to the importer overseas, funds are then telegraphically transferred back. Generally dealing with open account, our individuals being the supplier and the buyer have a great understanding of each other's business and they will actually decide that they're going to deal in open account. This is not for first time users and is advised against when you're sending your goods overseas if you haven't done this before. Open account is where you telegraphic transfer the funds from Australia overseas or from overseas back into Australia and there's no bank involvement. The risks involved with this are if your buyer has got to the point where they don't have any funds available, though your goods have already been shipped overseas and you may not receive payment at all. So if you have been dealing with somebody for a substantial amount of time, you may be able to use this. We, as a bank, we do provide the analysis of the risk and advise whether or not we think that this is appropriate. However, at the end of the day, it's actually up to the two clients or the buyer and the seller to actually make that decision on those payments. So an example of where an open account trade has gone wrong is for a customer that was actually sending Easter eggs over to China. The Easter eggs they decided they were sending on open account. However, the supplier here in Australia did not have enough time to actually obtain the quantity of Easter eggs that were required to send overseas. They missed the last shipment date in terms of getting in before the Easter period. What happened was when those goods landed over in China, the actual um, payment was not forthcoming because they'd actually missed the Easter period. So that is why when it comes to dealing in open account, we ensure that our buyer actually um, has the ability to make payment and we look to mitigate those risks for our customers. So this is payment in advance. You have your importer, your exporter. Between the two, they have a sales contract. Before anything is actually sent overseas, funds get transferred to the exporter who's sending the goods over at which time your goods are then delivered. Payment in advance is whereby a buyer and a seller uh, come together, they form the, the contract that they're going to deal with in trade and then what happens is before the goods have even left Australia, payment is received. There are risks involved with this, not so much for the exporter because they're receiving the payment before the goods have been shipped. However, when it comes to the importer, the risks involved are that they're not going to receive the goods. So the importer must trust that the exporter is actually going to put those goods onto the vessel. And if they don't put the goods onto the vessel, the payment has already been made. The pros with regards to this for our exporters is that they're receiving payment prior to the goods actually being shipped. And that's an actual guarantee, 100% payment. Documentary collection. You have your importer, your exporter, in this instance, we'll say it's an Australian bank and you have an overseas bank. To start with, there's a contract between the importer and the exporter, which will determine what sort of payment mechanism is going to be used. In this instance, we're doing a documentary collection. What happens is the exporter prepares the documents. So that includes your bill of lading, 
your commercial invoice and any other documents that are required under the collection. Those documents are then sent from the Australian Bank to the Overseas Bank. The Overseas Bank will hold on to those documents until such time as the importer pays. So the importer will pay, so the money comes back, and at that point in time, the documents will be released. So documentary collection is also a form of payment that can be used for our exporters. It's whereby the bank acts as a mailbox in terms of the documentation. So an exporter, for example, prepares the documents ready for export. They'll place the goods onto the vessel. A bill of lading will be produced at this point in time. The bill of lading being the title to those actual goods. The bill of lading along with the commercial invoice and all the other documents to clear the goods through customs are then sent into the bank. The bank then purely act as a mailbox. They send those documents through from NAB in, if, if you were to use NAB in this instance. We would then send them to the Overseas Buyers Bank. The Overseas Buyers Bank will then contact the importer who will then make payment. The good thing with these documentary collection is that the Overseas Bank will not release those documents until payment has actually been received. So for our exporter, it is a level of risk mitigant to ensure that the title of the goods are actually remain with the exporter until payment has been received. We do have an example of a documentary collection that has previously been used. Uh, what happened was we had a client that was sending some uh, retail apparel overseas, but what they were doing is they were having their uh, goods manufactured in China. The goods were being manufactured, they were sending the bill of lading along with the shipment to Europe um, and the customer was wondering why their documentary collection was actually not going through the bank correctly. So what I did as a specialist, I uh, overviewed that client's documentation that they were submitting to the bank, realised that they weren't submitting the bill of lading along with the re rest of the documentation, therefore they were not covered by the documentary collection because the title was actually going with the vessel from China to Europe and thereby they were actually dealing in open account and not realising that. That is the value that we provide in terms of a specialist, having the ability to understand what is actually happening in the international trade environment. And last but not least is the irrevocable letter of credit. So you have an importer, the exporter, they'll always start with the contract like in all of the other dealings. You have the Australian bank, and you have the overseas bank. What happens is the contract is first agreed and they've decided to do it under a letter of credit. The importer in the first instance must go to their bank and ask for a limit. So they'll ask for a facility limit, which will then advise the Australian bank that there is a limit in place. We then advise our customer, being the export, the limit is there. Our customer will then prepare the documents ready to go. So being the bill of lading, commercial invoice, so they're the documents. They'll come into the, the local bank. The documents are then checked. If they're correct, the documents are sent overseas. The overseas bank will then do the same checks. If they're correct, they'll advise the importer that the documents are right and the funds then get transferred back. If in this instance the documents are wrong, the overseas entity has five business days to actually call non-compliant documents. If that's the case and those documents do have anything wrong with them, it then comes back to fall between the contract for the importer and the exporter to renegotiate their terms. So using a letter of credit when it comes to international trade and first testing the water with a new party overseas, the letter of credit is widely used in that occasion. As I've mentioned before, there are different forms of payment when it comes to international trade. For our clients that don't particularly know each other that well, we would be looking to see whether or not a letter of credit is available. A letter of credit is whereby the banks on both sides of the transaction are involved. So the exporter's bank along with the importer's bank. What happens is an exporter prepares the documentation ready for, to send the goods overseas. 
They then submit those documents into the bank. When it comes to a letter of credit, it is outlined in the contract prior to the importer and exporter finalising their negotiation under that contract. Payments are set out under the letter of credit. They can either be a term letter of credit or they can be a site letter of credit. The difference between a site letter of credit and a term letter of credit are whereby for a site letter of credit, payment is made on presentation of compliant documents. For a term letter of credit, payment is made after a set term set out in the letter of credit. The letter of credit is what governs our customers and protects them when it comes to payment risk. For an exporter, when documents are actually prepared, they are sent into the bank. The bank then check them under that letter of credit, which has been established by the importer. If those documents are 100% compliant, they are then sent through to the importer's bank, checked against the letter of credit for the importer, and then if all are compliant, payment is then made. What happens though is for an importer, they must go to their bank at that point in time or prior to the, the um, finalisation of the contract and they actually have to set up a facility limit to guarantee that they're going to make payment. When it comes to letters of credit, banks generally refer to them as international bank guarantees. So what they're doing as a bank, we're actually guaranteeing that we're going to make payment to you as a client if those compliant documentation is presented. If, for instance, there is something wrong with the documentation, i.e. a shipping date is incorrect or the quantity sent overseas is incorrect to what the documentation says or there's a full stop in the wrong spot, the, the bank has the ability to say that those documents are no longer or are non-compliant. When it comes to our clients and talking about export documents, it's important that they have the skill set to be able to prepare that document in line with that letter of credit. Because if they don't have the actual skill set to do that, they need to um, ensure that they're engaging the correct people to actually help them prepare those documents. As the distance between sending your goods overseas and receiving payment lengthens, it will affect your cash flow. At NAB, we offer a product called Trade Finance, which can help alleviate and minimise the cash flow gap. We use this product to assist our customers when it comes to sending goods overseas to make payment to their suppliers. When it comes to making payment to your suppliers, it does put you in a greater bargaining power to receive discount as the bank will provide you those funds to pay the suppliers and then is not expecting to receive payment until you're receiving payment from your buyer. This is a great tool and it allows you the flexibility to assist you with receiving discount. It can be done in multi-currency, which is a great thing. And it provides you with the convenience of being able to fund that cash flow gap for you. Trade Finance is a facility that will allow you to cover the funding gap from when you pay the supplier to when you receive payment from the buyer. It can go up to 180 days in terms of um, cycle for repayment to be made back to the bank. So if you are considering exporting and you're needing some advice on the international payment risks when it comes to sending your goods overseas, please feel free to reach out to your relationship manager at NAB and I will be able to assist you. Thank you.